Hello students, today we are going to study a very important lecture in gurukulforcommerce.com's tutorial. This lecture is about a very famous concept which is known as the production possibilities curve. Many of you would be thinking why is this called production possibilities curve. This is basically a graphical medium of highlighting the central problems of what to produce. Now those of you who are joining us for the first time in this lecture might find central problems as an alien term but let me make it very clear that in this first chapter of microeconomics which is introduction to microeconomics central problems are to be studied first in order to know what production possibility curves really do. Let me give you a quick reminder on what central problems are. There are basically three problems what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. Now this is dealt in a, another video lecture of ours which I would appreciate if you can watch this. So let me go back to production possibility curves now. So what is production possibility curve? Production possibility curve is a graphical medium of highlighting the central problems of what to produce. That means it basically shows what production can we have. This is to decide what to produce and in what quantities. But it is first necessary to know what is obtainable. Therefore, our concept of PPC is going to help us understand what is obtainable, what actually can we have. The PP curve shows the options that are obtainable or simply you can say they show us the production possibilities. Another simpler definition would be it shows combinations of two goods which an economy can produce with the help of given technology and resources. Now many of you would be thinking why only two goods? What is this technology about? What are all these resources? So before you get into any further confusion, let me clarify it. So to understand the concept of PPC, please follow the assumptions which are given here. Assumptions are very important for you to understand this concept. So the first assumption that you need to know is that the resources which are available to you are fixed. Now why are we calling these resources to be fixed? They are known as fixed because if they are not to be kept fixed then we will have problem understanding it because see if resources we all are aware are limited and if I do not assume to be fixed and if they start varying they start increasing or decreasing then the production possibilities will also start changing. So for the sake of simpler understanding we are assuming the resources available to be fixed. The same concept goes for technologies as well. The technology which we are having in the economy is unchanged or in other words fixed. And also the resources are fully employed. What do you mean by full employment of resources? Why do we need to know that they are fully employed? Because if they are not fully employed there would be inefficiency also. So make sure whatever resources the economy has are being fully employed. So let us say if economy has got 1000 crore rupees to invest then it means economy is investing the entire 1000 crore rupees. It is not keeping anything with itself. Another assumption, assumption number four here is the resources are efficiently employed. Now there is a difference between being fully employed and efficiently employed. Fully employed means full utilization whereas efficient employment means the best employment or the optimum employment of the resources. What do you mean by optimum employment? Let us say I have a piece of land which is capable of giving me 1000 kg that is 1 tons of production. And because of my poor technique or because of my inefficiency of using or utilizing my land resource, I end up making 900 kg. Now would this be full employment? No. So in this case, what would be full employment? Full employment would be 1000 kg production on the land. This would be the fuller utilization of the land that you are able to produce 1000 kgs and you end up making 1000 kg is efficient employment. So you are utilizing the entire land that becomes full employment and you are producing the 
amount of production which is deemed to be produced is called efficient employment so basically don't get yourself confused with this it is very very simple full employment means entire usage efficient employment means best usage of the resource then finally we talk about the last assumption in this assumption is very important as this is going to formulate as a core reason behind the operation of marginal opportunity cost so what is this fifth, fifth assumption all about let us read it once the resources are not equally efficient in production of all products thus if resources are transferred from production of one good to another their cost increases or in other words the marginal opportunity cost increases marginal opportunity cost will be discussed further in the lecture but to make it simpler let me put it this way if a single resource is transferred from work 1 to work 2 then his efficiency declines look at yourselves right now you are doing a lecture in economics but let us say you are not an economics student but you are a biology student then would you be as efficient in understanding economics as efficient you are in understanding biology maybe no because your basics your skills are as per the subject of biology not as per the subject of economics let us take another very interesting example there is a person who works as a farmer now this person all his life has been working as a farmer and he is skilled and trained he is exceptional at his job but he is uneducated he is skilled he is completely into farming but he does not have education would this person be efficient working as an accountant would his efficiency be the same working as an accountant the answer to the question is no why because when the same human resource is transferred from farming to accounting his efficiency is bound to decline that is the reason why resources are not or are never efficiently employable in both the productions production of both the goods so to say now finally before we understand the curve we need to understand the production possibility schedule now you might be thinking why the schedule and what is schedule so schedule is the graphical representation of all the possible combinations that an economy can produce now over here what you have is different possibilities of producing guns and butter now why the guns and butter it could be any other example as well but over here let us assume government has got limited resources and government is to make guns and butters both in the economy now let me give you a situation let us say your country is having war now at that particular moment what becomes important for you as an economy would you be looking to produce butter or guns now some might say sir bit of butter bit of guns some pieces of guns and something of butter and yes that is the answer you might choose to have whatever combination over here we are having an example for you so we are not saying this is going to be the case throughout or this has to be the case everywhere but this is just an example to put it clear to make it very clear so over here see combination a suggests that we have 15 units of guns and we have zero units of butter but combination b says that if you start producing one unit of butter then you are required to lose on one unit of gun so if this increases by 1 this has to decline by minus 1 now what is this phenomena all about this phenomena is about marginal rate of transformation also known as moc now some of you might be thinking why moc and why mrt we are going to answer that in another lecture or you can find that lecture combined with this lecture also we are going to discuss moc in detail but right now without understanding moc i want you to just focus on how guns and butters are being discussed here so for now don't focus on mrt simply focus on guns and butter over here you can see that butter is increasing with 
one unit at a time one two three four plus one plus one this is how it is moving at every combination whereas guns are declining and they are declining so you are losing initially you lost one unit at combination b or possibility b at possibility c you lost two at possibility d you lost three at possibility e you lost four and at possibility f you had nothing you lost all five why did this happen why you were required to lose more of guns to produce a single more unit of butter why does this happen now this happens because of the sixth assumption which we recently discussed recall resources are not equally efficient in production of all products therefore when the resource was transferred from guns to butter the efficiency of the resource was put for butter and was taken away from guns that is the reason why you have to let go more to increase production of the other good by the same proportion we are going to discuss more about it in the lecture so i hope you have understood it till here and if you have understood it till here it shouldn't be a problem so if you have understood guns and butters and the possibilities then let us take a moment to plot it how are you going to now plot it you are going to take x axis and y axis right i hope you all are familiar with the axis work and this is very simple you are going to make your curve on the basis of combinations of the possibilities that you have studied on x axis what good are you going to plot you are going to plot the good that you are producing the one that you are gaining so in our example what we were gaining we were gaining butter so butter is to be plotted along x axis and along y axis you need to plot the good that you are sacrificing and what are you sacrificing here you are sacrificing guns so guns are declining whereas butter is increasing i would give you some time to plot it yourself so that this becomes easy for your understanding i would really appreciate if you can pick up pen and pencil or something or a digital pen maybe and start plotting it for your own sake of understanding i'm going to take a count till 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 I think I counted fast and perhaps by now maybe you are not able to complete your graph don't worry take your time to complete the graph